We all know people who have suffered from uh, cardiovascular morbidities and mortality. This is an epidemic of national and international proportion. We're facing not only a clinical epidemic of increased heart failure, but also an economic one. Patients, even given the best standard care today, are still suffering a five-year, 50% mortality risk. In the U.S., there are about six million people that have a form of heart failure. We talk of heart failure in two big buckets. One are people whose hearts are not pumping blood adequately, and those are what we call heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And then the other half are people whose hearts seem to pump blood, but they're still not functioning adequately to provide their body's needs. They're called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. What underlies the heart's or any muscle's ability to contract is a biological structure called the sarcomere. And, and that's a, you know, a little biological machine that's been engineered to uh, be able to enable muscle to shorten and contract uh, and generate power. Being able to target the sarcomere, being able to improve the function of the muscle provides a new avenue of therapies for patients and it may address a central problem in heart failure which is the heart's poor functioning ultimately you know that's what we're pursuing in cytokinetics there's absolutely good reason for patients to be hopeful and optimistic about where this field is evolving our research and our development activities have been ruthlessly focused in this direction for well over 20 years. We believe that our science can deliver on the promise for the benefit of these patients. You know, I've been practicing uh, medicine long enough to see how much change has occurred in the way we treat heart disease and the way we treat um, cancer and in the way we approach genetic diseases. In heart disease, you know, we've reduced the fatality of a cardiac arrest and we've reduced the mortality of our patients with heart disease. You know, I expect the next 20 years will continue to bring uh, amazing changes to the way that we approach patients with, with different diseases.